Hi, Jan here. I'm just looking at my phone because I'm operating the camera from my phone and that's not always an easy or an easy thing for me to do. I've literally just turned the camera on and it's saying that it can't connect to the Wi-Fi because we've got a new router and we thought we'd change everything over to the new router which these days when you've got doorbells and um, Alexas and printers and all the other things that you have you, you kind of think that you've got everything we've got all the mobile phones we've got the iMacs we've got the um, iPads phones we thought we got everything but the one thing that we forgot is my camera so that's fine if I'm close enough to operate it just by the controls on the camera but when I'm trying to do something for you so I'm sat <laughs> a long way away I hope you can see me um, it, oh dear it's just proving to be a huge problem and what I wanted to do at the moment was Neil's cloak it's um, a gift that I'm making for his birthday which is now tomorrow time is running out but I've had setbacks at every stage of the way you know I I used um, I thought I'd use my um, my GoPro on a chest harness and that would be good and you could get a nice view of that while I was doing um, some of the main cutting out but as soon as I turned the GoPro on that because I haven't used it for a while it wanted updating and so I had to do all sorts of things on that to get that working and then I found that well the the wool for the main part of the cloak I've got wool for the cloak and satin lining and the wool is 60 inches wide and I'm going to use both metric and imperial here it's six well it was 58 inches wide and seven meters long so that's about 23 feet I think it is long so it was this huge piece of material and it was folded in half um, along its length that's how it comes from the um, from the shop from the manufacturer but when I laid out the pattern on it there was no way that the cloak was going to fit on it like that so it meant that I had to unfold seven meters of fabric and refold it the other way over if that makes any sense I don't know if I can explain if I explain it with a piece of paper so it's folded like that and I had to unfold that and then refold it like that so that I could get the width of the bottom of the cloak on it and there was no way that I could do that on this table which is um, it's probably about a metre wide so I was going to have to put up the. I've got two tables like this and I was going to have to put them both up together which I, can only be done in the lounge I've got no space in the rest of the house to do it so that meant um, trying to get the um, as much dog hair out of the room as possible which Neil took that on as his job and he's not as good as I am <laughs> I was saying to him a couple of days before what we need to do is get the, uh, the dog's metal rake comb and actually do the carpet with that to actually lift all the but he thought he'd be fine with just the hoover. He, he did the hoovering and I'm very grateful. Well, I don't know why I'm grateful. It's not my mess. It's not my fur. But it meant that I didn't have to do that and use energy doing that before I started on something else. But anyway, it wasn't as clean as I would have done it had I done it all myself. And then we had to lock the dogs out of the room. So all the way through that part of it, they were singing. Or, or moaning and groaning but when I actually came to upload it onto my laptop last night most of it was missing and I have no idea I know it was recording even Neil said when I said to him I don't know if I'm recording or not he said you've got a red light on so I'm sure it was recording but for some reason it's, it's not there and I have no idea why so the battle of the fabric where where I was unrolling seven meters folding it the other way and pinning it all out and and cutting it I'm afraid I don't have that for you I've still got the hood pieces to cut out so you will see that happening and then I've not done any sewing for years so I've 
threaded up I've got a, a serger or an overlocker depending which country you're watching from which I really want to use especially for the lining because the uh, this silky satiny material frays terribly so I wanted to use it definitely on the lining if not the cloak as well but there is a problem with the um, with the lower looper and when I got the machine I did myself a handy little aid memoir as it were where I, I threaded it with different coloured threads so I've got um, I've got the uh, the left needle is in yellow the right needle is in red the upper looper is in green and the lower looper is in black so when I sewed a test strip I know I've got a problem in tension in the lower looper but I don't because like I say it's a couple of years and, and I do have brain damage so you have to you have to bear I have to bear with myself sometimes I know that the the tension problem is the lower looper but I'm not sure if it needs to go up or down in numbers to tighten it so I've got the book out to see if I can work it out from there there's also a um, a lady called Abby I think her YouTube channel is Abby's Den who is an absolute wizard with sewing machines and machinery and if you've got any queries at all about your sewing, sewing machines and things go on her channel and have a look and she's done an amazing um, method of she'll take four strips of, of material and I'm actually going to do it later so I might show you when I've done it and then you mark it off into the the, the four threads so you've got left needle right needle upper looper lower looper and then block it off in all the tension numbers so you're going through as you sew down it you're going through each tension so you've got a, a readable chart to say that if you want it looking like this you need it on lower looper number two or like this upper looper number four or something um, I, I, I expect I haven't explained that at all well but I'm sure her channel is Abby's Den but look her up if you're at all interested in sewing and if you're a bit like me and need all the help you can get then do have a look at her channel because she's brilliant so I've got to finish the cutting out so I've got the hood pieces to do I've got this here ready to pin the uh, I can't I haven't got my glasses on so hang on let me see what you're seeing if I can if I can bring it up on here on um, now it's saying that the connections failed so I can see that red light on the camera so I know it's recording but I can't check on my phone what you're seeing and I've got a table in between us so um, what was I saying I've got to pin out the hood on the lining fabric and cut it and then I've got to pin out the hood on the wool fabric and cut it now I've got a scrap of wool there but it's just about half an inch too small for the hood and if I was making it for any other reason than Neil's birthday I would say right we'll go with that and we'll just adjust it in other ways and make it work but as it's his birthday as I've got yards of fabric left I thought no don't spoil the ship for Hapeth of Tar as my mum used to say do it right if you're going to do it at all and the other problem that I've had with with doing all this and filming it for you is as I say filming it on the on the GoPro is just a non-starter really it just wasn't working properly and also having to lean forward over the table it was tilting the camera and moving the camera about so but the trying to film things in this room I've got to have you over next to the window so that the light's coming towards me if I put you in the better position for me to work over this side of the room then I'm all bleached out and and I've had a complaint on one of my other videos where I didn't have the curtain shut behind me and so it affected the light well if I shut the curtains behind me and have you over there I won't be able to see to do what I'm doing as it in as it is 
I've got the the blinds are open I've got the the overhead light on and it's still not good light and also because it's middle of January it's the uh, 16th of January today it means I've only got a couple of hours of usable light per day and then the light's gone completely and I find it very difficult to do things like this under artificial light especially things like if you need to thread a needle on the sewing machine you need the best light possible so so anyway I will as I've I've just got uh, my son's um, some of his weights that got left behind on here at the moment so I have just realized that there may be enough of this that odd bit of fabric that I was saying there might be enough I'm going to cut it out but once the pattern's actually cut it might be but that it's small enough that it will fit on that piece if, oh, I'm talking nonsense again you have to ignore 90% of what I'm saying today and Neil had said it doesn't matter if it's not done for his birthday because he's not intending to wear it tomorrow so you know it's kind of done when it's done but I just thought it would be nice because we're going out to the cinema he wants to see Avatar um is it the way of water or something but he wants to go and see it. our local cinema has the um the 4D seats which are the ones which move and spray you with water and you get smells and and all that sort of thing which can be really really good fun but I get dizzy walking around a corner <laughs> and it does say not to use the seats if you've got a heart condition yeah and um, obviously strobe lighting epilepsy not the best plan but I'm gonna do it anyway you only live once and he's only 50 once and sometimes you just got to throw caution to the wind and say blow it I'm just going to go for it and then he was saying he wants to go to Pizza Hut which is next door to the cinema but then the decision is do we eat before we go into the cinema because the film they've got two showing in the 4D it's either at four o'clock in the afternoon or eight o'clock in the evening we prefer to go to an earlier one so that we can get home and feed the dogs and things like that but I said if we go to Pizza Hut first we're going to be all kind of full of food and, and sleepy and we don't want to sleep through the film which has actually happened in the past where we dozed off in in the opening credits of one film and then didn't wake up until it was all finished I have no idea what the film was or if it was any good um, clearly not that good if we both slept all the way through but so I said we don't want to eat beforehand but we can come out maybe race home oh no I'm thinking of the dogs now it's still going to interrupt the dog food time isn't it I don't know it's not going to be a good idea to come out of the cinema race home feed the dogs and then race all the way back for pizza I was thinking unless we just got the pizza and brought it home to eat but what he was looking forward to is the salad bar they have um I expect your beets huts are the same if you ever go to them they have a eat all you want salad bar and if that's what he wants to go for then it's not going to be a good idea to oh the thoughts have just fallen straight out of my head I am so sorry I've been trying so I've been trying to get this done and make films and I'm aware that I'm so behind on all the films that I want to be making and I I say to you that I'm going to make a film on this and people were waiting to watch it and then it's it doesn't get done quick enough and I can only apologize just bear with me because sooner or later I always get things done in the end it just might be a bit of a wait 
I must say pinning this hood is so much easier where I can actually get my hand underneath the fabric and make sure it's gone through both layers because I'm I've got a cut four piece no I haven't have I hmm yeah it's got to be two pieces and it'll have a seam the uh, the cloak itself had to cut four pieces two backs and two fronts And I have to say, this is the most annoying pattern I've ever worked with. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me. They had two different pattern pieces for the lining and for the main cloak. And I think it is because one of the designs of the cloak, the lining had this big ruched effect so it had to be much much longer so that you can ruch it up but I didn't want to do that so to me it made more sense just to cut the lining exactly the same size as the cloak itself which is what I've done in the past with other with other projects I think this is cloak number six or seven that I'm making have to point out it's always really important to have really good sharp scissors when you're doing anything like this so I will, let's get these hood pieces cut out. And I don't know how well the microphone's picking up the sound, but I absolutely love the sound of scissors cutting through fabric. It's this sort of, I don't know, almost grating type sound. But I'm going to have to stand up to do this bit because I'm going around a corner. And I just hope that you can you can see properly. It's very difficult to try and get the camera adjusted right when I'm on my own. Especially because my camera, I'm using a Canon M50. I think it is an M50. M50. Oh, I can't see what it is. My app on my phone should tell me. Yeah, it's the Canon M50. It only gives you a couple of seconds on the screen before then the screen goes black. So when you're when you're getting your shot organised, you haven't really got any time to do it before you before you start recording which is just so so frustrating but other than that I love the camera that's just that one thing and no it isn't that one thing the other thing about it is um, it only films for 28 or 29 minutes on video mode and then it will um, stop filming. It's it's all to do with um, if it films for longer, then it has to be sold as a video camera, and then commands a higher tax bracket. So by making it turn off after a certain amount of time, it can still be sold as a camera and retain the lower. But it's incredibly frustrating and I'm sure that there must be some way of overriding it but I haven't got a clue how that's done. Right, so that's the lining pieces. And also, I wanted to make this upstairs so that I keep all the dangerous things out of the dog's way. When I say the dogs, I mean Echo because she's the problem dog. She's the one who's so interested in everything and wants to have a go at everything. And this little pin cushion actually goes on your wrist, which can be extremely helpful. And when I went downstairs to do the cutting out, I had it on my wrist and all the pins were in, but I must have caught one on something and dropped it on the floor. Next thing I know, I could hear she's got something in her mouth. Luckily, I'm using these. Uh, you won't be able to see that. But they're glass topped one, colour glass top ones, luckily. So I could hear something in her mouth and said to Neil, you know, puppy's got something in her mouth, can you grab it? And he pulled out a pin. 
So it's lucky that I'm using these glass top ones. And then of course the other thing is the dogs aren't allowed upstairs at all and when I've been... Um, I don't know why I moved... I, I was initially planning to do laying out and cutting out in here so I put the sewing machines out on the landing and then where the gates are normally closed downstairs to stop the dog the dogs coming upstairs the next thing I know she's up here interfering with things it could have been that she's actually moved something on on the overlocker and that's why the tension's not quite right it could be but it's not so anyway that's the two hood pieces So I just need to do the wall piece now. I've got no idea how long I've been talking. The camera may go off at any moment. If it goes off while I'm cutting it out, um, do like and subscribe so you'll see the next exciting instalment. <laughs> this has got to be as interesting as watching paint dry really, hasn't it? Because it would be a shame. That's the piece that I've got left from from the first end that I cut out but I've got yard, I've got about a metre and a half left up so it's just having a look the best way to lay it out The problem is that uh, these two pieces aren't completely lined up properly and if they're not lined up then one might be the right size and one might not. I'll just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Just pinning those together so they're not going to come separate while I'm trying to lay the fabric out and I've just stabbed myself with a pin but that happens give me anything sharp or hot and I will do myself danger with it that's just what I do laying it that way goes over just about a quarter of an inch so not very much but just enough to make me not want to do it that way I think we're in business we're gonna go with that and just to make it easier to, to pin out I'll just take that bit of excess off With other fabrics I would um, just lay the pattern out and chalk around it sometimes to make it an easier cut. And I have been known for, for patterns that I use over and over and over and over again to um, just 
copy them out on a very cheap fabric and so I've actually got a fabric copy of the pattern which is sometimes easier to work with. Yeah, this pattern doesn't seem to give you a seam allowance at all. is unusual and a bit disturbing. Well the red light's still on so I'm assuming that you're still there. So I'm hoping we get this cut out before uh, it goes off. then after this I'm going to have to sort out the tension on the overlocker and then once that's done then we'll be into actually the making of the garment, the sewing. I had when I was cutting it out yesterday is um, because I get arthritis in this hand having cut out the main part you know my hand was too stiff to just keep on going and keep cutting out So that's the the hood piece is all cut out and I'll call that it for this video because I know I've been waffling on and chatting away and so the next one will actually be the sewing of it. So I'll see you all soon and now <laughs> I've got to rely on the camera either turning itself off or trying to get a connection back to turn you off on my phone. Let's see if Oh, it's trying to do it on Wi-Fi. My phone's gone back onto Wi-Fi and it needs to do it on Bluetooth and it's not doing it. Or on, if I do it on 4G or 5G or whatever, let's try it on. It's all a bit confusing for me. That's it, I'm back using my own phone's things. Let's see if we can turn you off with the uh, same connection failed. No, it's not going to do it. I'm not going to have to get up and come round to say goodbye. <laughs> it's a bit of a tight squeeze in this room to get round the table. Bye for now.